Okay, I did a video previously about the Goldman-Hodgkin's Katz equation using this data set here. Um, but there's several other questions in this very long question that we can do, so I figured we'd look at those now. Now, we did the resting membrane potential for the cell last time. Now, this says, what is the nurse potential for each of the ions to which the cell is permeable? In other words, what would the resting potential be if the cell was permeable to only that ion? Okay, so what is the equilibrium potential or nursed potential for each of the above ions? Well, that's not too difficult, and we can actually do that pretty easily. So, let's start with the one for potassium. So, I'll say E, K, and remember the equation is equal to 58 log of the concentration of the concentration outside over the concentration inside, okay? So if we look at K plus, I have to bring it back on here. So if we look at K plus here, or potassium, the extracellular concentration is 15 millimolar, and then the intracellular concentration is 440 millimolar. So to find the nurse potential for that, all I have to do is plug in 15 millimolar and 440 millimolar, okay? So the equilibrium potential for K plus is equal to. Now, all we need is our calculator here. We can type this in 58 log of 15 over 440. And that gives us something like negative 85.1. So that's what I'll write here. So this is negative 85.1. And that's millivolts. All right. So that's how that, that one's done. And just remember, there's also this Z over here. that And those Z values correspond to the charge on the ion. So in the case of potassium, it's just plus 1. So let's do the same thing for sodium now. So for Na, so that's equal to 58. I'll put the Z value in just so people know that it's uh, that this is how it's done for completeness. So let's look at sodium. Okay, here's sodium. So outside the cell we got 170 millimolar. Inside the cell we got negative. We got 15 millimolar. So this is 170 millimolar, and this is 15 millimolar. All right. So we can do the same thing here. So I might just do that. And this is 170 divided by 15. Now that's a positive value as you can see. We got 61.2 roughly. So equilibrium potential for Na plus is plus 61.2 millivolts. All right, so that's the equilibrium potential for Na plus. Now let's do the same thing for Cl minus. Now remember, this one's a little different because it's a negative one charge on the Cl. So we wind up with a log, and again, back to our data set here. So outside, 130, inside, 9. So we're going to plug those two numbers in. So 130. 9 So what did I forget here? Okay, I should have put my negative in here. So second insert a negative charge and there we go, negative 67.3. So that's what that negative charge does there. So it's negative 67.3 millivolts. And now we've calculated all of the different values here. Negative 85 for potassium, plus 61.2 for sodium, minus 67.3 for chloride. Now, what, what we have to do here, what it's probably going to... Well, actually, it doesn't tell us to do that. Let's look at the question. 
So now that we calculated the um, nurse potential for each of these, it says what would the resting potential be if TTX, a sodium channel blocker, so it's going to block the sodium channel, essentially makes Na plus permeability zero, so sodium permeability will be equal to zero, was applied to the cell membrane. Okay, so they're saying we're applying this toxin, it's a sodium channel blocker. Now, that essentially just means that the permeability values that they were given up here, and the one for sodium is 0 0.05, that's just going to be zero now. So essentially, sodium no longer matters. That's what this is saying. So what would the resting potential be if TTX, a sodium ion channel blocker, was applied to the cell? For this question, we do have to use the Goldman-Hodgkin's Katz equation, okay? And that equation said that the VM was equal to 58 log, and then it had, remember, the concentration of Na plus outside, the concentration of K plus outside, the concentration of Cl inside, and then all the way around. So let's see if we can find those values on our paper and plug them in. Now remember, the permeability here for sodium is zero. So let's start with K plus over here. Now, K plus or potassium outside the cell is 15 millimolar. So I'm going to put that in here. This is 15 and that's multiplied by a permeability constant of 1. Okay? So that's multiplied by 1. And now let's look at chloride, because that matters, because, that, because sodium doesn't matter. So 130, so this becomes 130 millimolar. And for chloride, the value is 0.43. Okay? So this is 0.43. Now the same thing would have to be done over here for I'm giving you guys the wrong information, I'm sorry. This is chloride for chloride, it's inside. So it should be the intracellular value of nine millimolars. Because remember, this is the reverse and because we're not using the charges in front anymore, we have to change this up so that this comes out correct. So, now that I've corrected that mistake, let's plug in the values inside. So, 440, so this is 440, and that's multiplied by 1, and now we plug in the 130, and that's multiplied by the same value of 0.43. Okay, so that's all the information there, finally, in the correct way. This is the concentration for um, potassium inside, outside the cell, rather. This is the permeability constant. This is the concentration of chloride inside the cell. Permeability constant, and vice versa down here. So you can plug all those values in to the calculator, and I might not even plug them into the calculator. Actually, I might just tell you what the actual value is here, in the, for the sake of time. The resting membrane potential is equal to negative 82.3 millivolts. Okay. So that's negative 82.3 millivolts. When you do this whole thing out, which the way I would do it is I would maybe work all this math out here first, get two just two values here, and then plug it all in the way we did previously. So this works out to negative 82.3 millivolts. And I believe there's one more question in here that I think we'll have enough time to do. And it says here, what would be the what would the potential be if TEA, a potassium channel blocker, so PK, so the permeability to potassium is zero, were applied to the membrane? So we got now. Now they're saying that this is essentially going to be well. I shouldn't say that. This permeability value of one over here is now zero. But anytime you multiply by zero, the, the number is just going to be zero. So K plus does no, no longer matters. So it's the same principle here again. So the VM is equal to 58 log. Now the values are going to be 170. And I'll show you in a second where I'm getting those from and why. And this is 0 0.05 plus 9 
and that's multiplied by 0 0.43 for chloride and this is 15 0 0.05 and that's plus 130 times 0 0.43 okay so where did I get these values from going back over here the permeability for sodium outside the cell is 170 so that's 170 times 0 0.05 because that's where I'm getting the permeability constant from down here 0 0.05 and remember it's the inside of the cell that we we're concerned about first chloride so it's 9 and that's multiplied by 0.43 okay and then I just go vice versa so 15 millimoles inside goes on the bottom here and that's multiplied by 0 0.05 which is the permeability constant which doesn't change in any of these cases and 130 multiplied by 0 0.43 okay so when you get this value VM is equal to negative 38.3 millivolts so now you can see that this cell has become substantially more positive okay now that we've gone over here and we've in this case we had a sodium channel blocker and over here we had a potassium channel blocker we wound up with a really really uh, a greatly more positive I mean still negative but more positive value okay so that's important to kind of note the differences depending on what channel is being inhibited or what channel is being blocked you're going to have differences in the membrane potential and obviously sodium I mean potassium rather plays a large role in the overall membrane potential resting membrane potential okay so the last question basically says what would happen if both TTX and TEA were applied at the same time so what would happen if both of these were applied at the same time so now sodiums being blocked and and rather potassiums being blocked and sodiums being blocked so what would happen if both of these were blocked well the only thing that would affect the the um, overall resting membrane potential would be chloride so essentially this would just be the nurse potential really I mean you could plug these values into the Goldman Hodgson's cat cat's equation or you can just use the nurse equation to find this final value and that would just be a case of VM is equal to 58 and that's the log and remember 9 for the intracellular right 9 and that's multiplied by 0 0.43 and that's 130 for the uh, for outside the cell for chloride and 0 0.43 again okay that should be a 4 and what you wind up with is a resting membrane potential of negative 67.3 millivolts okay so as you can see this and this should be the exact same value we got up here for the nurse potential from that data set and you can see that it is look equilibrium potential negative 67.3 negative 67.3